Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I achieved this image. Now the look of this image is all to do with focus zones and how you can change the parts of the image which are actually apparently in focus. I'll explain as we go along. So, just to set the scene, what I have here is a half roll of background paper uh, which I've uh, put on a stand uh, and just draped it over uh, this, uh, this table here uh, and I have the subject which in this case is uh, a pack of crayons just on the table uh, with uh, the camera relatively close in um, I'm using a 24mm uh, wide angle lens uh, on this uh, full frame uh, digital SLR uh, which, as usual, I have tethered uh, into Capture One software. Now, it's worth mentioning uh, a little bit about the detail of this lens. This isn't uh, an ordinary 24mm uh, wide-angle lens. Uh, it's a uh, tilt-shift. So, for instance, if I move this uh, control here, I can tilt the lens down relative to the camera body, or conversely, winding it the other way, I can tilt the lens up relative to the camera body. The effect that has is to change the plane of focus. As we are at the moment, the plane of focus is parallel to the back of the camera. So the plane of focus is like this. Therefore, if I tilt this lens down, like so, I change the plane of focus so it's more of a, on a flat. So it's more in line with the, uh, the tops of all these crayons. Conversely, if I tilt it upwards, then the plane of focus, instead of being uh, parallel to the back of the camera, has actually shifted the other way. Now, I'll take a few examples of this as we go through the video. So you can see uh, the difference that uh, tilting the lens will make. Right, so let's just get started with the uh, general uh, lighting for, for this subject. What I want to do is put in a fairly large softbox about here somewhere, just above the subject. Uh, this video is more to do with the, the way that you use the lens than the lighting, uh, but nevertheless, we'll pay uh, uh, attention to it. So I'll just go and get a uh, flash uh, and put it in uh, at about this position. OK, there we go. So this is a uh, Profoto B2, uh, which is a pack and head system. It's relatively small, uh, 250 joules. Uh, so the head is at the top here, uh, and I've got a, a two-foot uh, softbox on that, uh, and the pack is just uh, on the side. So we'll just turn that on. OK, and that's just on an arbitrary um, power level of 5, uh, so it's halfway along its scale. So to start with, uh, as I usually do, I will take the uh, flash trigger off the camera. And we'll just do uh, a test exposure just to see what contamination we're getting, if any. OK, so that was taken at uh, f8, and you can see there is no contamination uh, to speak of. Uh, just to be sure, I'll take it all the way down to the widest aperture for that lens, which is 3.5. We'll just do another one. And we're getting a very small amount of contamination, uh, but nothing uh, too serious. So I'll pop that back to 8. Uh, and now we'll just put the uh, flash trigger back on the top of the camera. OK, and we'll just do a test for exposure. Uh, and there we go. Uh, you should be able to see from that we're probably about uh, a stop and a half down. Uh, so let's add uh, one and a half stops to that. Do another one. Yes, that's much better. 
Uh, I'll just put the exposure warning on. Uh, we're just clipping a little tiny bit at the back here, but nothing too serious. Everything else is good. So this is our base image, if you like. Taken with no tilt or shift on the lens. And you can see that it's, it's okay. There's nothing special about it. Uh, I'll just put a mark on that. We'll call that one our base. So the first thing to notice about this is that um, the focus, the depth of focus, uh, even at f8 here, is relatively narrow. You can see which uh, ones of the crayons are actually in focus and which ones aren't. If I wanted to, I could uh, increase the, the depth of field or the apparent depth of field by using a uh, smaller aperture, a uh, larger f number, um, and we'll try that. We'll, we'll show what that does. So instead of using f8, if I were to go up to um, f16, which is two stops, I'll add two stops to uh, the energy, and we'll take a, another picture. And again here, you should be able to see that um, the apparent depth of field has got greater. Uh, if I switch between the two, uh, you can see the, uh, the effect that has had. Now if I take this up um, again, uh, from 16 uh, to uh, 22, which is the maximum for that lens, I'll add another stop to compensate for that. So that is the um, largest uh, F number, smallest aperture for that lens. So that was F8, and that is F22. So you can see that we've increased the uh, apparent focus across the image uh, quite a lot. So far, so good. So what happens if we take this the other way? So if I take it all the way from uh, 22 through 8, back down to uh, 3.5. So I'll have to take off uh, some energy there to compensate. I think it should be somewhere around there. Okay, so you should be able to see in this image at uh, f3.5 uh, that we have a very narrow depth of field. Uh, if I compare that to the original that we took at f8, that was f8, and that is 3.5. OK, so by altering the aperture, you can alter the overall depth of field. But that's not really what I want to, uh, to show here. What I want to show is that there are zones of focusing uh, which are achievable uh, with uh, a tilt lens. So uh, to go back to the uh, base image that we took, which is this one here, which we took at f8. If I reset the aperture to f8, and I'll reset the uh, flash to the appropriate energy, we'll take another image. There we are. Uh, this is uh, our base image that we had before. So now, uh, what I can do is uh, manipulate the, uh, the lens to show you the effect of uh, tilting it. So the first thing that we'll do is tilt the lens uh, down. So I'll take it all the way down like so. And to compensate uh, for that, I'll just have to reframe the, uh, the shot. If I don't reframe the shot, uh, this is the result that you get. So you should be able to see that the whole thing has become uh, tilted down, as you'd expect. So to compensate, what you actually do is tilt the whole camera back in the opposite direction. Like 
like so. And because that has actually moved the lens relative to the subject, we just need to reframe the image slightly like that. And we'll take another image. OK, not bad. This is what we had before. And that is what we have now. So you should be able to see from that that the apparent depth of field has got ever so slightly larger. I mean, it is quite difficult to see, but you should be able to see that these ones at the front here, especially these points here, you should be able to see that all that is quite sharply in focus. Uh, and the centre is reasonable, the back has gone out. Whereas on the uh, original, the centre is in focus, the back's out of focus, and the front is out of focus. OK, so that was pointing the lens down. If I then point the lens in the opposite direction, this will exaggerate the zone of focus. And again, if I just take a, a, a picture here without actually moving the camera, you'll see that the area that we're actually taking a picture of has changed markably. So I'll just need to reset the camera. And as a result, reset the subject, like that. OK, take another one. Now in this one, you should be able to see that um, the zone of focus is a lot smaller than it was uh, before. If I show you the uh, one with no tilt and shift, and, and this one with uh, the opposite uh, effect, you can see that this is way out of focus at the front, and it's way out of focus at the back, and the zone of focus is very small, and it's just in the middle. And this gives uh, a certain look to the, uh, to the image. Uh, but it's, again, it's nothing um, too spectacular. But there's nothing to stop you uh, exaggerating the effect by using it in combination uh, with uh, an aperture which is feasibly a lot smaller to give you a narrower depth of field. So with it as it is at the moment, let me change the aperture from um, f8 to uh, 3.5. So we'll go from 8. I'll go from 8 to 4 to start with, which is two stops. So I'll just take two stops off. Grab another image. There, now we have a marked effect. Uh, you should be able to see that your zone of focus is very, very narrow. Uh, extremely narrow, in fact. It's just this line in the middle. Uh, the ones on the uh, outside here are way out, and these are way out. Uh, so this is what we have now. That's what we had before. And this is unachievable any other way. You can't uh, do this w uh, to this extent without uh, a tilt shift lens. But one of the other things that you can do with this lens is change the uh, plane that you actually do the, uh, the tilting of the lens in. As it is at the moment, we've been tilting the lens up and down like so. But by manipulating the lens itself, you can then swing that round. so that it's at 90 degrees to where it was before. Uh, so once again, this will have to be reset. Somewhere around there. 
We'll take another image. So this is what we had with the, uh, the lens tilting upwards. So the plane of focus is across here. And this is now what we have uh, with the plane of focus rotated through 90 degrees. And you can quite clearly see that um, the, the ones that are in focus are actually at an angle now, instead of um, being straight across this way, which can give quite a curious effect. OK, so having done that, just to um, drum the point home, if I now change the aperture from f4 to um, f16, we grab another image. Now you should be able to see that the, uh, the focus zone is right across uh, the centre portion of this image but the extremity on this side and the extremity on this side is now out of focus. So then you should be able to see that this is a very powerful technique of manipulating uh, what can be a, a relatively simple image. Uh, so just to drum the point home, I will do uh, just one more uh, with uh, an extreme uh, tilt and shift and uh, I will change the uh, orientation as well uh, and you can see the sort of result that you can achieve. So I'll just set that up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just rotate the lens so that we're shifting it about 45 degrees now. I'll just move the subject to suit, something like that. I might just change that ever so slightly. Bring this in here. Focus point. There. that. Okay, and then on here, take this way down to 3.5. I'll have to take quite a lot of energy out of the system. I'll just give that a quick go. There you can see um, the effect that uh, I've created here. Uh, we have a, a zone of focus which is running uh, at about 45 degrees across the, uh, the image. Uh, so we have this in focus, this in focus and so on across this line. Everything else uh, has become quite blurred. So all that remains for uh, this particular image is just to uh, import that into Photoshop uh, and just do the uh, final few stages. So here's the image uh, opened up in Photoshop. Um, what can we do with this? Let's just start by making a uh, duplicate layer. Like so therefore we can always go back to the original background um, if you want to uh, re-edit it at any other stage. Um, so I will add an adjustment layer and just add um, a levels there on that. And I'll just take the, uh, the white point up ever so slightly, just to make sure that the whites are actually white at the background here. Uh, and what shall we do? Just generally increase a little of the mid-tones there. Lovely. There we go. Uh, obviously, by doing it on a, uh, an adjustment layer like this, then I have control over that. So if, for instance, I wanted to take some of that adjustment out of the center, I can just, using a brush, uh, paint in a mask. Uh, so if I go for a large brush here, that I can just take down the middle a little 
just to saturate the colour. Uh, and really, I don't think there's that much more that I need to do to that. OK, with that adjustment made, uh, it just remains to uh, add a crop, just to concentrate the, uh, the image a bit. I think that looks quite nice. And there we have it. Uh, an unusual take uh, on what is a relatively simple subject. Well, I hope that's been some use. Uh, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.